so we just got this expression for our, our Hamiltonian. And um, I'm going to rewrite it a little bit. So I'm going to use our commutation relation for the creation and annihilation operators. Uh, this thing. And in this case, so this is for, you know, in general, P and Q are different momentums, momenta. And this expression, um, everything has momentum P. So basically, I'll get a delta P minus P, or del delta of zero. Uh, so I'll just take this term, commute these two, and use, using this relation, and my Hamiltonian will become this. And this is a problem because uh, we have a delta function evaluated at zero. And the delta function evaluated at zero is infinity. So uh, we'll see that we can deal with that. Um, first, let's, uh, let's define a, a vacuum state, a ground state. So we'll define that in the usual way as it's, any, it's a state where any of our annihilation operators acting on it will give zero. So if we want to find the energy of our ground state or vacuum state, then we, we will act our Hamiltonian on it. And if we do that, then uh, you can see you know, this term leads with an annihilation operator, so it will be zero. And so we'll just be left with this term. And again, this delta function is infinite. So we get an infinite energy in our um, vacuum state. And um, as it turns out, um, the argument for why that shows up is because of our, basically, this delta function is evaluated zero is, is equal to this integral over all space. If, we're, if we use our general relation, our integral relation for our delta functions that we've been using, uh, and we plug in, you know, p's equal to q here, then this will be e to the zero, so it's one, so it just turns into an integral over all space. So basically, if we're assuming that our field exists um, in an infinite space, and we're integrating over all space, and there's energy associated with every point in the field, then, of course, an infinite field will have infinite energy. So actually, this kind of makes sense. So the solution to dealing with that is to look at the energy density instead. So basically, our delta function is like the volume, or two, two by... Yeah, it, it pretty much is the volume of our space um, divided by 2 pi cubed. So if instead we work with the energy density, so we take our uh, energy here and divide by 2 pi cubed delta of 0, then uh, we'll get this expression for the energy density. And this is also infinite. So it, uh, we're integrating over all momenta, and there's an infinite number of momenta, so um, yeah, this, this should also be infinity, at least mathematically. Uh, so the argument for this thing is that basically our theory should break down at small wavelengths. So for high momenta, um, there should be a cutoff, basically. So we should get some finite uh, energy density in our field. But, so, in practice, um, all of the calculations that we're going to do, the energy associated with the vacuum will cancel out. So if you imagine, you know, the most trivial question you could ask is um, the energy of, of a state that has one particle versus the energy of a state with an, another type of particle. And you ask, what is the energy difference between those two states? Well, 
the energy of one state will be the energy of the one particle plus the ground state energy. The energy of the other state will be the energy of that particle plus the energy of the ground state energy. And so when you calculate the difference, that ground state energy will just cancel out. So uh, basically what we're saying is this ground state energy is something that is, you know, exists and is there and can have physical consequences um, in some some uh, calculations. But in most calculations that we're going to do, uh, we don't care about it because it will cancel out. So essentially, we can just redefine our Hamiltonian by throwing away uh, this term here. So we'll just be left with this, this thing. And I have these, so this is known as the normal order Hamiltonian. And the reason for that is basically to get to this expression, instead of going through you know, all these arguments about infinities and things, I could have just taken, uh, taken this term, moved the annihilation operator to the right, and then combined with this, and that would have given me the same expression that I ended up with anyway. So essentially, no, this uh, normal ordering operation is just a shortcut way of doing all these things. It just says, take uh, whenever you get an expression involving creation and annihilation operators, just move all the annihilation operators to the right. And that will give you the uh, correct or maybe convenient form of the Hamiltonian that you'll want to use.